joined in the pledge. <coughs> We have minutes from our meeting on October the 3rd. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. And we have a consent agenda that was prepared for us and sent out on Friday. Uh, do we have any items that need to be pulled from the consent agenda for further consideration and discussion, or can, may I have an uh, a motion to approve the consent agenda as a whole. I'll uh, make a motion to approve the consent agenda as shown. Second. Judith? Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. That takes us to uh, page 5, item 11. Which is the uh, resolution to pay our bills. In the amount of uh, this, this is going to be a cheap week. It's uh, it's a bunch of X's in my copy. Oh so. no! What happened? <laughs> oh, That's I know. Okay. I I know precisely what happened. Can you tell us the amount? Um, yes, Miss Suki can tell you the amount as soon as she flips over to it. If I can get to it. I can. I'm on the wrong stack right You're now. You're in the wrong pew. All right. So our amount for the week. It's not as cheap as we had wanted it to be. Million six hundred nineteen thousand three hundred twenty seven dollars and forty four cents. And these are for the checks dated today, October 10th, as presented by the auditor on October 8th. Okay, we have a motion to approve uh, resolution 165 18 is contained in item 11. So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Item 12. Wait. Good morning, Wade. Good morning. Before I start, our Record Center medal arrived at 5 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 4 a.m., and just the last load came at 9 a.m. But it's being unloaded now. Agenda item number 12 is a recommendation for myself, Wade Grabowski, uh, Clement County Facilities Management Department, with the concurrence of Mr. Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to authorize Mr. Edwin H. Humphrey, President of the Board of County Commissioners, to execute change order number two to the contract with Perkins Carmack Construction from Milford, Ohio, for the construction of a record center facility for Claremont County, located at 24. 25 Claremont Center Drive, Batavia, Ohio, previously ratified by the Board of County Commissioners on 5-9-2018 and subsequently amended on 8-29-2018, which represents, number one, an increase in the amount of $2,152.95 for additional co concrete required due to over-excavation, number two, an increase in the amount of $9,815.96 for additional labor and materials for soil drying and turning, and number three, an increase of zero dollars for editing scope to include use of fiber mesh from laser screed and number four an increase of zero for the delay in delivery of the pre-engineered metal building from the manufacturer for a total increase of eleven thousand nine hundred sixty eight dollars and ninety one cents and a total adjusted contract price to date of one million nine hundred thirty five thousand eight hundred seventy five dollars and forty cents as well as a time extension of 45 days for the completion thereof for a revised contract completion date of april 12 2018 Pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein, and in contingent upon the release of the required purchase order in concert with requisition number 5299, dated 918 2018. So we have several things happening here. We originally had a 10 foot front overhang, which developed into a 14 footer on the blueprints, which the contractor created, but the architect was incorrect. That's the uh, e extra concrete. Uh, the no, no dollars for the laser screen and a different type of mesh that they were using. The biggest one is the um, labor and uh, manpower to go ahead and attempt to dry the soil prior to us deciding to go ahead and putting the lime stabilization in. The 45 days is strictly because the metal was delayed. Um, it is here now, as I just mentioned, so that is a good thing. Now, in talking to the general contractor, 45 days is what they requested. However, I doubt, unless we have some really, really bad weather in the next two months, I think we'll be under roof within about a month. Okay. 
We have a motion to execute change order number two is contained in item 12. So moved. Second. Discussion? Yeah. Wait on the on the 45 days. Yes. I take it that those 45 days are non-compensable to the contractor. Correct. Correct. That probably needs to state that. Okay. I understand. Okay. <clears throat> because any time a time extension is given, usually, the direct, the direct cost. Direct cost correlation, but in this case, it's not. It's a, it's actually the uh, metal manufacturer's um, problem, and of course they blame the tariffs and all that good stuff. But this stuff came out of a place called Portland, Tennessee. Don't ask me where it is. I just know it's on the west side somewhere on the border. Never been there. Hey, Wade, the uh, soil drying and turning. I mean, I'm sure there's. The contract was pretty detailed, but it seems like that's <coughs> part of the job. I mean, yeah, so we, it's wetter than usual. Well, that's what you bid. Yeah, you know? and we, we actually uh, we actually discussed this really heavily at the very beginning because we thought originally that the natural drying would take place, even though we knew the geotechnical reports were wet. As it turns out, with the amount of water that we had, um, you know, in excess of 11 inches, I believe the National Weather Service has indicated uh, for this year. And because we didn't want an additional time delay, we, we decided to do the lime stabilization, which is almost a instantaneous drying of the soil, if you will. So we changed the parameters by putting We, we changed it, yes, from a natural dry to um, introduction of the lime to stabilize the soil so we could pour the slab in time. And that was just done last week. We took the core samples yesterday. Um, Commissioner Painter, you'll understand we received almost 80% on the first core. So we can go ahead and work on the slab now. And that's good. The metal is here because the first thing that's going to go up is the beams. Um, you'll see a skeleton of a building here by Friday. So, so Judy, on this particular motion, if we're going to make the, if we're going to change this and say an extension of um, a non-compensable schedule extension for 45 days, do we need to amend this motion? then I move that we amend this motion and that we identify this 45 day extension as a non-compensable um, Just add extension. the that it is not, no compensation to the vendor. Correct. Is there a second to that motion? And I accept the amendment. Okay. Any other discussion? All, uh, uh, Judith? We, yeah, we originally had a motion by Mr. Ubel and seconded by Mr. Painter and then an amendment yep. by, um, to the motion by, um, introduced by Mr. Painter. And is Mr. Ubel in concert with that? Okay. Okay. Good. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. And thank you. For thank, the you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item 13. I'm staying. You can't get rid of me that quick. There you go. <laughs> uh, it's my recommendation, Wade Grabowski, Director of Claremont County Facilities, with the concurrence of Ms. Suki Sheets, Assistant County Administrator, to adopt resolution number 166-18, resolving to declare certain personal property, specifically motor vehicles, trailers, and equipment and tractors, acquired for the use of county offices and departments of Claremont County, is no longer needed for public use, obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired and forfeited vehicles released for the sale from the Claremont County Sheriff's Office and to sell the offer stated property at public auction to the highest bidder pursuant to section 307.12 of the Ohio Revised Code and number two to execute the contract for auction services by and between the Board of County Commissioners of Claremont County, Ohio and Mike Toller, Toller's Auction Service at a Felicity, Ohio to advertise, promote and sell the reference personal property at public auction with the commission therefore to be 8% of the gross sales pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and number three to authorize the clerk of the board to place a notice of public auction in the newspaper of general circulation on 10 18 2018 designating that saturday 11 3 2018 at 10 a.m local time at the premises known as the claremont county municipal court rear parking lot 4430 state route 222 in batavia as the date time and place of the sale therefore this notice will all be also be posted on claremont county's website the following link www.claremontcountyohio.gov in order to view the legal notice, please click on the link, Legal Notices, located in the Claremont <coughs> County homepage. This is our annual auction, um, which uh, we don't have, normally we have a lot of vehicles, now we're in the 40 to 45 range. Um, it was late just simply because we couldn't get things uh, out of the uh, impound lots and things like that. Plus, we had a little delay in some of the contract notification. It's the latest we've ever had anything, but we've had plenty of time to advertise. And we've already had at least 50, maybe 52 inquiries asking when the heck we're going to have our auction. 
So we weren't able to tell them until today, but we've kept the list running. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve a resolution 166-18 as contained in item 13? So moved. I'll second the motion. Discussion? Judith? Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 14. Item 14 is a recommendation to execute a contract for services between the board and Matrix Imaging Solutions out of Sanborn, New York. This is for the generation and mailing of the, our utility bills and notices for the Claremont County Water Resources Department in accordance with the scope of services. Uh, the estimated amount is $32,000 uh, with services commencing on November 7, 2018. It'll be in full force and effect for a one year period uh, subject to the terms. This is a per unit price contract. They bill us, um, the uh, rate is the same that we've had with this company for the last probably three contract terms. Um, they bill us based on the pieces. So it depends how many bills we're actually printing and mailing. Uh, the postage portion will be a pass through. We just pay for the postage that's necessary to get the bills mailed to the people. We are seeing a uh, higher sign up for electronic e-bills utilized through our new services. So ultimately our hope is that the number of hard copy bills continue to decline. So 32,000, I would imagine that does not include the postage. That That's does not include postage, right. So what their service is, is to process the, the file that we send them to provide all the supplies. So they'll provide two envelopes that go with each bill. One is the outgoing and one is the return envelope, as well as the eight and a half by 11 pill, bill form. Okay. We have a motion to execute the contract for services is contained in item 14. So moved. Second. Discussion? Judith? Mr. Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Hi. Item 15. Good morning. I'm Lyle Bloom, Director with the Water Resource Department, and item 15 is a recommendation to award the bid for project number 6402-62007 relative to the collection system rehabilitation 2018 project located in Pierce Township, Union Township, Williamsburg Township, and the Village of Amelia. Uh, pursuant to the plans and specifications to performance pipelining incorporated out of Ottawa, Illinois for their lowest and best bid received on August 16th, 2018 for a total amount not to exceed $3,068,800 and to execute the contract relative thereto pursuant to and compliance with terms and conditions and the award of bid and contingent upon the release of the required purchase order. So this is our collection, annual collection system rehabilitation uh, contract. We'll be lining uh, approximately 18,687 feet of eight inch and 10 inch sanitary sewer. Uh, that includes 644 manholes that will be lined and 263 laterals. The laterals going to the individual homes and businesses that will also be lined and we'll install a clean out at the right of way line on each of those as well. Is this, uh is this actual relining, is this done with the, with the inflatable and the hot water, or is this done with this the cementus? Steam cured. Uh, it's a, yes, it's the uh, cured in place pipe yep. that, they, that they install. And then the, uh, the manholes are actually lined uh, with a different product. Okay. So while this is done, I guess we do it on a recurring basis, but every year we do, say, 18,000 feet. But how long will that last before we come back and we start over? This should renew the useful life back to 50 or 60 years. Oh, really? Yeah, so this is, uh, this is rehabilitating a lot of our uh, concrete and asbestos cement pipe that has deteriorated due to the hydrogen sulfide. And the new product is more resistant to hydrogen sulfide, so it may, may last even longer. It's even better than when it was new. Correct. Mm -hmm. And so in it, there's no joints in it. It's, uh, it's seamless, basically, um, from manhole to manhole. Uh, Judy also remind me, reminded me this project is part of our OPWC funding. Um, so a portion of the project cost, which is $800,000, would be funded through Ohio Public Works Commission. Are, are they cleaning the manholes or are we doing that for them? They, they clean it all. They clean it all? Yep. So they clean, televise before they do any of the lining. Yep. So we have a motion to award the bid is contained in item 15. So moved. I'll second the motion. Discussion? Just a mm -hmm. quick quick note to allow this um, comes out to $170 per foot 
if you had to put it in new, what would it cost to put that in? Oh my! <clears throat> uh, Dig a hole and put it in. Two hundred and fifty huh? bucks a foot. It's it's more expensive. Two fifty. Yeah, because you're dealing with existing utilities. There's a lot more disruption of service. It's it's a lot bigger project. Depending on the depth of excavation, if sure. It's in the bracing. pavement. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Item 16. Thanks, Lau. Good morning. Morning. Jim Maloney, the administrator to uh, for the sheriff's office. Uh, item 16 is the county sheriff. This is an amendment to the contract for law enforcement services with the board of Washington Township trustees for same 17-1120-002. In short, uh, back in 2014, when the contract uh, was uh, written, at that time, Washington Township wanted to donate towards a canine. And they did so, um, and um, they have their dog, and everything's going uh, fine. They're very happy. Uh, but we did realize uh, the, when it came up for renewal again, that the term donation cannot be uh, used. It's, it's basically illegal, so to speak. So, um, not a proper term for a contract. Yep. Correct. And so uh, it was changed to a uh, one time fee, and that's basically what the amendment is. Uh, uh, it was, the words were changed to a uh, one time fee. There was some other language uh, that Washington Township uh, put in there about their donation was about $21,000, so they wanted that in there. Um, and uh, I had the um, prosecutor's office add and tighten up the language so that uh, all parties were clear that uh, Washington Township has full responsibility for the canine when it comes to all other costs except for uh, the um, liability insurance. We have liability insurance on that dog. We always have uh, on all of our canines. So um, they wanted that uh, language to be cleared as well because it is our it is our dog and the canine reverts back to the county afterwards. And that's basically uh, the language changes that uh, happened. Okay. We have a motion to execute the amendment to the contract is contained in item 16. So moved. Second. Discussion. Jim, how many total dogs do we have uh, in our canine patrol? We have four uh, with a new puppy making five. The uh, new puppy is um, a bloodhound. Our bloodhound uh, will be taken out of service uh, once the, uh, the puppy has been trained fully uh, to be uh, replacing the other one. So basically we have four that are functioning and a puppy in training. <laughs> So the one being taken out, is it uh, just because he's not good or he's used his useful life is over the or he's getting old? Life, yes. So how old is that dog probably? I, I, I was afraid you were going to ask me That's that. That's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, let me just suppose, I, I don't know whether human we're talking human years. lives or dog lives, okay? So I'm, uh, I, I just don't he's have senior. that. He's a senior. I'm sorry, I don't have the Sorry. age of the he's dog. He's a senior puppy. But I guess he goes goes home with the officer typically, right? Yes, sir, he does. All our dogs do. They live with the... Uh, K9 Hamler. Okay. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Senior. Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Uh, item Thanks, Jim. 17 next. Item 17 is a recommendation of the county engineer to execute record plat number 629 3081 for the Pine Bluff subdivision in Miami Township. Uh, for the performance and maintenance uh, bond for sidewalks. Okay, do we have a motion to execute the record plot as contained in item 17? So moved. I'll second the motion. Discussion? Judith, roll call. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Ubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Item 18. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Chris Mellon with the Claremont County Auditor's Office. Item number 18 is a recommendation of Linda L. Fraley, County Auditor, with the concurrence of Thomas Eigel, County Administrator, to award the proposal for street level imagery relative to the sexennial reappraisal of real estate for taxation purposes for the County of Claremont, Ohio, pursuant to the specifications to Tyler Technologies Incorporated, 
One Tyler Way, Moraine, Ohio, 45439, a concert where their responsive proposal therefore received on August 16th, 2018 for the acquisition of the aforesaid services to update the county's digital structure photo database as well as addresses. As more fully described in the statement of work identified as Exhibit C, attached thereto and made part thereof, and is it in and as it relates to the County Auditor's 2020 revaluation plan for the County of Claremont, Ohio, and to authorize Edwin H. Humphrey, President of the Board of County Commissioners, to execute the agreement by and between the Board of County Commissioners of Claremont County and Tyler Technologies, Tyler Technologies relative thereto, for a total amount not to exceed $170,648, effective today through January 31st, 2020, pursuant to and in compliance with the terms and conditions set forth therein and the award of the proposal, therefore, and in compliance with sections 307-862-307-88 of the Ohio Revised Code. So this is in conjunction with our revaluation plan uh, for 2020. Uh, we have roughly, in the, the, this agreement is for uh, roughly 68,000 improved parcels for the photographs to be taken from street level. Um, and this, what happened was then that will come into the office and then we'll utilize these pictures along with our orthos that we have in order to do uh, our, our due diligence as far as revaluating the property. We have a motion to approve item 18. So moved. Second. Is there discussion? Roll call, Judith. Mr. Ubel. Yes. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. <coughs> Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. I knew a little bit about it, Suki. Uh, number 19 it is a recommendation from Mr. Thomas J. Eigel, County Administrator, to approve and sign a grant of easement from the County of Claremont, Ohio, to Duke Energy of Ohio uh, for utility purposes of constructing, reconstructing, operating, patrolling, maintaining, repairing, replacing, relocating, adding to, modifying, and removing electric and or telecommunic telecommunication line or lines, including but not limited to all necessary and convenient supporting structures. Uh, such as poles, underground ducts, conduits, wires, cables, manholes, pull boxes, guy wires with anchors, grounding systems, counterpoises, surface equipment, including but not limited to transformers and switch gears, and all other appurtenances, fixtures, and equipment necessary for the purpose of transmission and distribution of electrical energy and for technological purposes, including but not limited to telecommunications, both overhead and underground, in, upon, over, along, under, through. I was going to do a funny and say over the... What is that through the river and over the, the, the yeah but the i digress i'm sorry both overhead and undercrown <laughs> in upon overlooking across the property identified as parcel number 60224.009 located on filiger and east filiger roads in batavia township as more generally known shown in exhibit a attached there too and made a part thereof back in the early summer we inquired as to natural gas installation on the filiger campus because of the amount of um, propane we were using during that process, we found out that there was no easements for natural gas, so that held up the project. Well, the storage barn, um, which we've been working on, we have to have a pole set for electric, and we found out they didn't have any electrical easements either, so we couldn't put the electric in there. Um, this is to cover up years and years of them servicing it anyway, but legally they haven't been able to, so this corrects that problem. And it's a very large parcel. Very large parcel. Yes. Over 50 acres. Um, I believe they were telling me that it was over 2,100 feet of, of, of line. But they've been fixing it and just didn't have permission to. Not that we complained. They have official. Official. Yes. That's correct, sir. Oh, they couldn't locate. They had permission. They just didn't have official permission. So do we have a motion to approve and sign the uh, uh, grant of easement as contained in item 19? So moved. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Roll call, Judith. Mr. Painter. Yes. Mr. Yubel. Yes. Mr. Humphrey. Aye. Thank Item you. 20. Item 20 is our financials for the week. Uh, first, we have a supplemental in the Medicaid sales tax transition fund of $284,377.17. If you remember, this is the uh, fund that was required to be established by the state legislation when they enacted the uh, temporary transitional payments for support for our loss of those revenues. So this is the uh, in installment that we just got later this year, and we're going to go ahead and 
increase that appropriation so we can move that to general fund. Okay. And, and Suzuki, do we finally see now what that equates to as far as the loss of Medicaid? We're still, yeah. you can't, you can't af completely define how much of our revenue stream is lost from Medicaid. We have all, we're still estimating that to be about a million eight, a million nine a year. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason is we don't have the details to our revenue stream, um, what came in and what was coming in from Medicaid versus the others. So they, they made an estimate at the state level. And we're, we are seeing that, but it's offset a bit by our revenue growth in the rest of our sales tax. Okay. So but this Medicaid transition payment actually amounted to a total of $2.1 million now for everything that we've received from the state as far as the one-time payments. More than one year. It was more than one year's worth, right. Sick, you remind me, but how much longer do we get this, these transitional payments? We won't, I don't, we won't get any more. Yeah, unless the state does something else in their, in their legislation. And that, and that was something that was in place for seven or nine years, right? It, since 2009, yep. yeah. Yeah, so it's a big loss to the counties. The, uh, revenue stream. But the state's and the states well theirs is and bigger the than whole. ours mm -hmm. states whole yeah yeah states state whole. made theirs whole they didn't make us whole this is like obamacare you can if you like your doctor you can keep it well if you like your medicaid transition tax you can keep it but you can't it would be nice but no yeah. right yep. everything you can't count on that one yep. um we also have a uh, grant with the municipal court the municipal court intensive probation fund is increasing their salaries and other expenses for a uh, grant that they hadn't planned on receiving but they it turned around and got it so they're going to move some people over there uh, so in regular salaries we have an increase of nineteen thousand five hundred ninety dollars and in their other expenses for their services an increase of five thousand seven hundred seventy six dollars and sixty two cents okay, do we have a motion to approve the supplemental appropriations as contained in item 20. so moved second discussion roll call judith Yubel? Yes. Yes. Stromford? Aye. We have an add-on? No, we do not. We, that is number 18. Oh, that was that number was 18. Christmas. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. uh, anything else we need to do? Executive session. Okay. So we have a need for executive session pursuant to 121.22 G1 and G3 of the High Revised Code to consider <coughs> the discipline of one or more employees and to confer with the prosecuting attorney regarding pending or imminent litigation respectively. Do we have a motion to go into executive session under those two sections? So moved. I'll second the motion. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Yubin? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. We'll be back. Uh, we're back from executive session. No decisions were made. Uh, we have one add-on. We have one add-on. We have a personnel action in the Claremont Transportation Connection Department and Amy Regensberger. Um, it's a one-day disciplinary suspension with pay. At work with pay. At work, a working suspension. Yep, yes, working thank suspension. You. Do we have a motion to approve that suspension? So moved. I'll second the motion. Is there any discussion? Uh, Mr. Painter? Judith? Yes. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Is that it? Public. Public. So we have need for public comment. Is there any time, anyone that would like to address the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Mr. Yubel? Yes. Mr. Painter? Yes. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. That concludes our business for today. Thanks for joining us and God bless.